So thank you so much everyone for joining our virtual career speaker series today. This program is open to junior achievement students across New Mexico, and we highlight business professionals, entrepreneurs, and innovative thinkers from a variety of industries. Each featured speaker will share details about their education, their job, and their career journey. Before we get started, just a few virtual meeting etiquette reminders. First thing, this, um, this video will be recorded and we will post it onto our YouTube channel for anyone who is unable to, to join today's session. So please feel free to send the YouTube link when you get that to anyone in your network. At this time, please type your first and last name into the chat box, please. That'll just help for our records. And if we have students that are on the call um, or educators with parents on the call, please just let us know how many students are on the call with you. During the speaker's presentation, please make sure all of your mics are muted. And if you have questions during the presentation, we can you can write them down into the chat box and we'll address them during the Q&A portion of the event. So today we are so excited to continue our Women Empowerment Month sponsored by the Jennifer Reardon Foundation. And we are so thrilled to welcome State Representative Georgine Lewis, General Counsel for Tesuke Pueblo. Georgine, the floor is yours. Thank you. And good morning, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> um, I'm Georgine Lewis. I am currently serving in the New Mexico House, and I'm also a lawyer with the Pueblo of Tesuque. Um, so let me start off by telling you a little bit about what I do and then how I got there. So um, as general counsel to the Pueblo of Tesuque, I really deal with any of the matters that the tribe deals with. One of the things, of course, like everyone else that we've been dealing with is the um, pandemic. So it's been really interesting working with state and federal partners to ensure the tribe gets access to uh, food, vaccines, and, and medical care. So it's it's been really interesting for me. Um, I'm a member of the Pueblo of Acoma, and I grew up there on the reservation. Uh, it's located about 60 miles west of Albuquerque, so it's pretty rural. And uh, being a member of the Pueblo of Acoma, uh, the leadership roles are reserved for the men. So that's the tradition of, of Acoma Pueblo. And um, so in trying to figure out how I could help my tribe, I thought that going to law school to become a lawyer would be really helpful to serve uh, my community that way. So um, I think a lot of people have these plans in their heads and that's great, but um, I was actually a teen mom. So when I was in, in high school, I became pregnant. And so, you know, it was a bump in my path, but definitely something that I learned um, from now that I had my daughter, she was a huge motivation for me to continue to go to school and to succeed so that I could have a, um, a good foundation for her. So, um, that was always the plan and, and I continued to go on to law school and became an attorney. So um, for, for folks watching out there, for kids especially, you know, you're always gonna have these um, ideas and plans in your head. And sometimes things don't go out the way, um, that turn out the way you want them and that's okay. So um, you'll just have to remember uh, those bigger, goals and plans and just keep at it. There are so many people that can help you. Um, with me, it was my family, my friends, teachers, uh, counselors. So everyone really pitched in to ensure uh, that that I um, didn't get discouraged in any way. And um, that was really helpful. So um, as a lawyer, it's been really really interesting because I do get to see firsthand how having agreements with with different entities really affect my client. Um, as a state legislator, um, it's, it's extremely important to be able to listen to my constituents and voice their concerns and their ideas. 
as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm from the Pueblo of Acoma, and when the seat in the legislature became open, I jumped in knowing that the uh, state of New Mexico has 11 percent Native American population, but that's not reflected in our legislature. So, so every time I pursue something, it's knowing that I have a voice um, for people like me, uh, growing up poor, um, living in, in rural New Mexico, and having different lived experiences. So that's always been really important for me to um, ensure that representation for, for people that are similar to me um, is there and that voices are heard. So I think I do a lot of that being a lawyer uh, for the Pueblo as well as being in the legislature. So um, yeah, uh, my journey wasn't at all easy. <laughs> there is uh, challenges um, along the way, but definitely knowing that I had a great support system, I had a lot of encouragement, I was able to um, fulfill my dream of becoming a lawyer and now um, being a legislator. So it's it's been it's been a, a fun journey, and um, I just again want to encourage folks that you know if if things don't work out quite as planned, that shouldn't deter you from pursuing your goals because um, if you work hard, you can find a way to achieve them. Thank you so much, Georgine. Such great advice. Um, we can move into the Q&A portion of the event if that's uh, fine with you. Yes. And so right now we will open up the chat for anyone who would like to ask questions to Georgine. Um, we have some questions that were submitted through the registration. And so the first one is, how do you handle and balance any differences between tribal law and New Mexico state law? So, um, Tribes are sovereign entities, so tribes create their own laws. They're governed by their own laws. So a lot of times um, the state laws don't come into place. But there are sometimes conflicts with state entities. But I think a lot of the tribes, and especially the state of New Mexico, too, work so well together to address some of these things. And we actually then end up in partnerships. So we'll establish um, memorandums of understanding, memorandums of agreements, or joint powers agreements to ensure that the two sovereigns, the state of New Mexico and the tribe where I work at now, the Pueblo Tosuque, um, that, that we're really working in agreement on a government to government basis, listening to one another and um, ensuring that um, the people within the tribe as well as um, within the entire state of New Mexico really can come together to express our shared interest, our shared values, and really work towards that common goal. Excellent. Some questions from the chat. What made you want to be a lawyer? So, um, as I mentioned, a leadership role in, in my tribe, such as the governor or the council, is not for women. It's, it's reserved spots for men pursuant to our tradition. And I remember my dad would go to the tribal meetings and he would come home a little frustrated and um, I would ask him, why he was upset and and he said you know just things weren't moving as fast maybe as as some folks wanted um but he didn't really know how to address that and so he said you know um we need lawyers we need lawyers that are going to be able to help us move our initiative forward and so that kind of just you know put a put a put a light in my head and and I said okay so if I'm a lawyer then I can help the tribe move forward with whatever needs they have um you know whether it's health care whether it's education uh, agreements with other governmental entities so really it was just um my dad <laughs> making me aware that lawyers were needed and I was like 
Yeah, well, I can be a lawyer. I can I can do that. I can do whatever it takes to become a lawyer. And that's always stuck in my head. And, and you know, um, I don't work for my own tribe, <laughs> but I've, I've helped out in other capacities. And being a lawyer for a tribe is, is really fulfilling. Thank you. Quite a few questions in the chat, so we'll keep moving forward. So what challenges do you face? Um, the challenges that I face, um, probably right now is time. <laughs> We're constantly busy. Um, and there's so much work to do, um, especially serving in a dual capacity right now in the legislature and the, the, the tribes lawyer. It really is a, a matter of time management. So that really depends on setting priorities based on um, you know what the tribe's priorities are, what priorities are happening at the legislature, and really being be, being able to balance that. So um, I mean, time just slips away so quickly, unfortunately. Um, when the quite next question is, where did you receive your law degree? So I received my law degree at the University of New Mexico School of Law, and I also received my uh, bachelor's degree at UNM. And one of the coolest things about um, going to law school is that they're looking for individuals with different types of backgrounds. So my bachelor's degree was in English and philosophy. I had a dual major, but if, if you're interested in art, you know, the law school will, will consider you because there's also art law if you're interested in entertainment. There's entertainment law. So really um, what I tell uh, students is to pursue your passions. If, if there's a field that you're passionate about and you still want to go to law school, do that because they're looking for diverse candidates. Excellent. Follow-up question, how long have you been a lawyer? So I have been a lawyer now for 15 years. It's really <laughs> crazy to think about it. Excellent. Another question. Can you tell us what other kind of cases that you work on for the Pueblo of Tezuque? I was interested to learn that many Pueblos have historical water rights that override the state of New Mexico and New Mexico cities. Is that true? So I was actually going to talk about that <laughs> with, you know, other issues. So right now um, there have been um, disputes about water rights, which is generally settled by federal law. So for instance, the tribe that I represent is in a settlement agreement with the United States and the, um, so we're talking with other entities, including the state of New Mexico, as well as the county of Santa Fe. And again, bringing all those government agencies together so we can figure out um, how we implement the settlement agreement. So um, these have been longstanding uh, disputes. Um, some of them are 40 plus years and finally being able to address them now has been really interesting. I am not the water law expert, and so we have outside counsel to help with that. Excellent. What legislation have you helped pass or are you working on that you are the most proud of? So yesterday we actually passed the Civil Rights Act and um, it passed on the House floor. It went through two committees in the House and now it's off to the Senate. So I, I'm really proud of that bill. Um, currently, we're currently in session because it really uh, provides for individuals to be treated equally under the law, regardless of their background, regardless of their race. And so I think it really shows that New Mexico legislators are looking out to protect people. And I think it's gonna go a long way to ensure um, equality under the law. Excellent. Did you ever feel like you wouldn't be able to push through? Um, 
I, that's a great question. <laughs> you know, um, I definitely knew, or I definitely experienced times when I was, I felt beaten and just exhausted. There were times when I was really thinking, how do I push forward? What do I need to change in order to succeed? Um, I, I think, you know, especially during my, my first year as an undergrad at UNM, just out of high school, going to, to college, it was really just a different environment. Um, I went to a very small high school and then going to the UNM campus was pretty intimidating. Um, also, some of the classes that I took were difficult. And so I am not going to lie, I, I was very intimidated by that whole environment. And although I, I didn't I didn't want to quit. I, I really felt that it was going to take a lot more effort than I, ex than I expected. And so again, it was just, how do I figure this out? How much time do I need to spend in the library to be able to read my assignments? Do I need to seek the advice of my professor or a tutor and, and really just trying to think things through so that I wouldn't get to the point of saying I quit? Um, so I think it's really important when someone has a challenge in front of them just to calm down, not make any quick judgments or decisions and really think about how um, you can take the next step. And if that means talking to your parents, talking to your teachers, talking to counselors, your friends, um, there's no shame at all in asking for help. Um, and people you will find along the way will be very happy to help. So, so I'm glad that question was asked. That's a great question. I think that there's a great follow-up question right after that is what is the biggest piece of advice that you would have for an aspiring lawyer? So I think it's, um, if, if you want to be a lawyer, do it, <laughs> do it, do it, do it. Um, the world needs great lawyers. Um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a matter of being dedicated. So um, I loved school. I'm sure a lot of the students attending this, this conference today um, love school. But even if you don't, um, you know, again, there's always help. So I, I would say tell people you trust, your parents, your friends, your teachers, your counselors, hey, I want to be a lawyer. Um, they'll probably have a lot of advice for you. But I think once you say it out loud, it becomes something that's real. And I think I, I did that when I was a kid. And so my parents were always saying, oh, Georgine's going to be a lawyer. And, and knowing that people believed in me enough um, was really, really inspiring. And I think once you say it out loud and, and, and pursue that, um, commitment to to becoming whatever you want people will people will support you people will encourage you you'll have cheerleaders along the way um and then as a as a small follow-up is pursue what you enjoy if you want to if you want to go to law school you know again you can study art you can study english you can study political science um because uh like i said the law school is seeking diverse applicants so pursue your passions Excellent. Question from the chat. What is the median salary for a lawyer? So in New Mexico, I, <laughs> I want to say, but I could be wrong. On average is maybe 80,000. Um, again, it depends on what kind of lawyer you become. Um, we, if, if you're a government lawyer, I think the, the salary is a little less. 
Um, if you're a patent attorney who works in the field of copyrights, trade trademarks, um, and and they require a, a hard uh, science degree, then you'll move up. So again, it just kind of depends if you're going into corporate law or doing government law, um, that plays a factor in it. But I, le I believe it's around 80. Thank you. What is the proudest moment from your career? The proudest moment, um, I don't know if I could pinpoint it to just one, but I do feel a lot of satisfaction um, knowing that, you know, I, I've helped create a, a document or uh, participated in a meeting where I know it's going to benefit my client. So I can't say it's like one proud moment, <laughs> but, um, you know, we do come across a lot of situations where um, we have disagreements at the beginning. And again, you know, that's why we have to have conversations and discussions about let's talk about our shared values. Let's talk about our shared mm -hmm. goals. And if we communicate and, and have these conversations together, then we can probably find a solution. So I think being able to navigate that water has been um, really fulfilling. Excellent. This is a great Q&A. This is so great. There's lots more questions. So the next question is, when did you join the legislature? I joined in um, 2013. So I ran for office in 2012. And I um, then won my election in November of 2012 and then came on in January 2013. So I'm starting my ninth year already. <laughs> wow. Nice. Another question, how difficult would it be to become a lawyer for servicemen and law enforcement? So um, when you go to law school, a, a lot of times you, I mean, at UNM at least, you have like a certificate program, but generally you study the law just broadly. There are several requirements like in high school, like in college that you do have to take. Um, and then pass the bar. But really, if you would like to do that, um, it's likely a government agency because the um, law enforcement is under those governments. So, you know, if it's the city of Albuquerque for Albuquerque Police Department, in, in my instance, I am the Pueblo's lawyer. So um, I do help out with law enforcement agreements and any issues that they come up with. Excellent. How many years of, is law school? Law school is three years. And I actually did a study abroad um, during the summer of one of my, my years. So I was in Geneva, Switzerland for about five weeks. And it was great. That's amazing. I'm going to give anybody who would like to unmute an opportunity to unmute and ask a question. Just give it a couple of seconds. Okay. All right. Well, if there's no, there's no more questions in the chat box, so I'll start wrapping us up. Thank you so much, Georgine and students. Thank you so much for being on the call today. Before we log off, there's just going to be a couple of announcements. So first things first, after this presentation, you will be sent a post-program mindset survey. And if you complete the survey, you'll be entered into a drawing to win a Dion's gift card. A huge shout out to Dion's, who has graciously partnered with us to um, provide Sur, um, survey respondents with gift cards. And so teachers, if you are facilitating this for your students, just make sure that they get that link so that they get entered into the drawing as well. And lastly, you guys can join us next week as we continue and final our final Women Empowerment Month. And this month has been sponsored by the Jennifer Reardon Foundation. And so next week will be a live only event and it'll be on February 24th, and we will be welcoming Anna Murphy, Senior Portfolio Manager for the New Mexico State Treasurer's Office and CFA Society member. So please keep an eye out for your registration links, and we will see you all next week. Thank you so much, Georgine. Thank you. Take care, everyone. <laughs>